Good evening and welcome to the Pastor Study at Faith Community Church in Geneva. I'm going to be speaking about Joseph and his dream. I'm going to be here on, for a few weeks. We're talking out of Genesis chapter 37 and God gives Joseph a dream and it sticks with him. And he tells his father and his brothers that they're going to bow down to him. Well, that makes them irate because he's the youngest and on and on and the envy and Scripture says, wrath is cruel, uh, uh, anger is outrageous, but who can stand before envy? Well, they couldn't, so they decide to sell him as a slave, and into slavery he goes. Uh, there's a whole message on from the pit to the pinnacle, uh, but that's another message. Continuing the idea of dreams, and we all have dreams. The average person dreams 19 dreams a night, and that's when God is speaking to our subconscious, into our spirit, so our brain, our mind, can pick it up. Uh, psychologist Carl Jung believed that religious experiences are necessary for wholeness, and he saw dreams conveying very important insights into our, now listen, spiritual journey toward God. So I want to speak about dreams that are spiritual journeys toward God. And uh, some of this information is coming out of Windows of the Soul, which is an excellent book about dreams by Christian psychologists, uh, Minneth and Weiss, uh, if you're interested in that. But talking about the journey, it's a step-by-step -step process in our life as Christians, as how we mature, how we hear God, how we obey God. It's a journey. And these dreams are a journey that gives convincing, they give direction, uh, so eventually we can look back on our dreams and say, oh, I see the journey, the steps, the dreams that God gave me. And that's proof and it's uh, confirmation of where I am with God. So I want to just real briefly go over three journeys that stuck with me. And I want to ask you, have you had dreams in the past that have stuck with you uh, that you need to address? You need to find out what God is doing. Well, one, and I had this uh, when I was a young man, I'm running through Missouri cornfields and buckskin trousers, and, and I'm all by myself. I was alone. That's important. And then another dream that stuck with me, I saw a biker sitting in front of a, on a motorcycle in front of Centropolis Baptist Church uh, in Kansas City, and that stuck with me. Then later, I was uh, seeking God and direction from God in my life, and I was in an Assembly of God church visiting to see what they were talking about when they were uh, teaching about the Holy Spirit. Uh, and in Jeremiah 33, 3, Knock and I'll show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And I saw, actually saw, a red and white van. I blinked and it was gone. But that was the first real vision dream that I understood that I know I saw. Well, a week or two later, I'm driving down the highway. I look up on a cliff and a Dodge dealer, and here's a red and white Dodge Maxi van. I get off the next exit and come back, and I know, I said in it, I know this is of God. So what I did, I gave them a bad check, a $50 check, told them I want to buy and purchase this. Uh, by the way, don't do that, okay? I knew, I knew that this was God. I didn't have the money at all. But anyway, I purchased that, and then later in my life, and remember, I talked about uh, the steps, convincing, directing, and proof that God has been working all along. Here's a red and white uh, Dodge van. Uh, then I had a later a vision of a red and white hot air balloon and started a ministry to the red and white uh, bike club, the Hells Angels. So dreams can add up. It's a journey. It's step by step. Now, so drawing to a conclusion, <clears throat> of course, we have the church, we have the bikers, we have our congregation, we now have the Melchizedeks that minister to that club in all different states. So the proof, looking back, was God showed me step by step, and for the time being, only that one step was important. So where God has you in your life is important. How did he get you there? And what are you foreseeing in dreams or visions or words of knowledge or understanding? So it's a journey with God and to God's will in your life. Now, often dreams and, and other people will uh, generally do this against you. Dreams are often considered not possible, 
not practical and not reasonable. And your family or somebody else will tell you, they'll, they'll in detail tell you why it's not possible. They'll tell you why it's not practical. They'll tell you why it's not reasonable. Now, <clears throat> I want to give you a concept uh, of developing and, and from a dream and a vision into understanding God's will for your life. A dream can be a flashbang. Boom. You have it. You know. You, you can't figure it out. You know God gave you that dream. I've had a half a dozen of those or so. That's how we got this building. That's how we started the church. and all. It was a flashbang. Boom. And, and now everything's different. Or it can be a slow revelation. It can be God showing you a little bit and you follow him. God shows you a little bit. And all of a sudden, it's a dream concept. And so it's not that bang, actual dream or actual vision, but it's a development so that now you have a dream or a vision in the psychological sense. So I want to talk about uh, my stepson. And uh, Bud always had a desire to be a doctor to help people. And so he was earning his different degrees. And while he was doing that, uh, he went to Mexico and built some homes there, uh, just like the ones we're building now in our church in, in Honduras. Now, that's important because later he gets selected because not only of his grades, but because he went out of his way to help the poorest of poor. It's important to look back in your life and say, where has God taken me? How did I get here? I believe God then. I believe God now. I believe God in what's coming. So he decides uh, he wants to go ahead and take the test and see if he could get into an, a medical school. And by the way, he's 41 years old. Now people could tell him it's not possible, it's not practical, and it's not reasonable. After all, he's 41. Well, he decides, I'll go ahead and take the test. Hopefully, a medical school will allow me in. Well, he's been selected by three medical schools. He gets his pick. And the one that he wanted, and he moved there ahead of time because he wanted to be in that area and go to that school, is Texas Tech Medical School. So he's been accepted, and he starts there next month. It is never too late to have a vision and a direction from God. He can look back on his life and say, you know, I sense this about God. I saw this about God. I saw this in my life. And you put all those together and you say, oh, that's why God, how God has me here. And one of the decisions for them selecting him, there were others that had better grades, but he went out of his way to help the poorest of poor. And so that was one of the determining factors on how you're helping others. God will honor that and God directs you to help others. So, don't ignore, but explore your dreams. I'll say that again. Don't ignore, but explore your dreams. See, dreams are a way of God showing you his will. We need to pay attention to dreams. Uh, one third of the Bible is written out of dreams, visions, understanding. Paul says, whether in the spirit or out of the spirit, I don't know, but I was in the third, first or second, third heaven when John saw it's the supernatural. God works supernaturally in the natural. And Kathy's going to be speaking about that in the next five minutes or so. So God is good. God is great. And following his is a challenging life. So love, love, love. God's love creates. So God bless you tonight.